So yesterday, Inkscape released the beta version of 1.4, which is scheduled to come out later on this year. And it looks like they have some pretty big things that they're cooking up here. So I wanted to take a moment to go over some of these new features. And I will include a link to this in the description of the video in case you want to download this and test it out yourself. So the first new addition we'll be having a look at is the new filter gallery. Now, normally when working with filters in Inkscape, it's kind of a clunky experience because you have to go through them one by one to see exactly what they are and what they do. Well, now we have a filter gallery that shows us a preview. So if I select my subject here and I go to filters and select filter gallery, we now have this filter gallery that opens up over here in your dockable menus. And we have all the different types of filters in here along with previews of what they do. And if you want the entire list, you can just select all effects and you get the whole index right there. So I'll select one of these just as an example. I'll apply, let's say the leopard fur filter and I'll click apply. And there we go, we were able to apply it just like that. Now I'm gonna press Command Z or Control Z to undo that. And if you want to apply some more filters, you can just do that through this menu here. So that's a really useful addition that I'm happy to see because previously, like I said, it was really difficult trying to figure out what exactly these filters do. Another interesting new addition to Inkscape is the modular grid option. So I'm going to go to file and I will go to document properties. And if I come over here to grids, You'll notice we have the typical rectangular and axonometric grids, but we now also have a new grid type called modular. So I'm going to apply that and you can see what it does here on the canvas. It creates all of these different, I guess you can call them segments or compartments, and you can change the size of these blocks over here in the settings. So let's say I wanted to make these blocks 250 by 250. I could just write that in and I wanted to change the spacing between these blocks on the X and Y axis to 10 for both. So I'm going to change that to 10. And now we have that set up accordingly and I can close out of this. And this could be useful for arranging objects on your canvas. So let's say, for example, I wanted to arrange these logos in a nice grid pattern. I could do so very easily using this grid. And I would imagine there's lots of other things this grid will come in handy for as well. And finally, there is the new unified font browser, which is my favorite new addition to version 1.4 because one of my biggest pet peeves of working with Inkscape is that it's really difficult to work with text. In other applications like Affinity and Adobe Illustrator, it's really easy to cycle through different font options. But with Inkscape, it's always been a clunky experience. So with this new font browser, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, so let's take a look at how that works. In order to access this font browser, you have to go into Inkscape Preferences. So I'm gonna double click on one of these tools over here to open up the Preferences menu. And I'm gonna come up here to the search bar and search for Unified. And what I'm looking for over here is where it says Font Selector. You wanna make sure you choose this option right here that says Unified Font Browser and then Restart Inkscape afterwards. And once you do that, I'm gonna select a text object here and I'll open up my text editor. I will go to Text and select Text and Font. And you can see we now have this new font browser. It shows you all of the different fonts and the different styles. And if I select one of these fonts, you can see on the canvas, it updates the font on the canvas. So I could just use my down arrow key and cycle through all of these fonts. So this is a really useful feature, especially doing logo design. This is something I do all the time. And I very often use other applications to find fonts because of how difficult this is in Inkscape. But because of this new feature, I would say, Inkscape may actually be easier to work with in this regard now. So that's a really useful new feature that I'm excited to see. So that should do it for today's video. Like I mentioned previously, I will have a link to this page in the description of the video in case you want to download this and check it out for yourself. Uh, this is just the first beta release. I would imagine over time they will be adding more features. So check it out and let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Join the Logos by Nick mailing list and get over 200 free design templates, including logos, avatars, textures, infographics, and more. As a member, you'll receive news, updates, and tips about your favorite design apps. Just use the link below to subscribe for free and download your templates. As always, thanks for watching.